What's up, everybody? Aslan Hajavandi, Director of Digital Media at WordChant.com. Corey Clark, lead writer, senior writer, two titles, because he's doubly yeah. nice, everybody. Thanks for being here. It's the WordChant Wrap, sponsored by Vitamin Energy, vitaminenergy.com. These, Corey, mm. you're going to be my savior for the next week sure, that's the workout one? So. Yeah, oh, nice. Workout yeah. Plus. Yeah, nice. Workout Plus, berry flavor, we're all out of the sour apple. They're not, though, over at vitaminenergy.com. Go there, use the promo code WordChant, BOGO, buy one. Get one free. Knowles helping Knowles. Next time you see one of these, hopefully it's going to be Irish O'Fell and Corey Clark talking about a big dub for the Knowles. Uh, at Avita Field or whatever it's Aviva, called. Aviva. 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 Aviva Stadium, yeah. All right, so they practice on Monday. Uh, they're going to practice tomorrow, but we can't watch it. Wednesday they're also going to practice in town. Ben, their guy Matt, Kaylee the intern, they'll be here helping out. But um, takeaways from Monday, I thought Darion Williamson, I might need to call him uh, – Bolitnion Williamson? Oh, okay, I don't know if we're there yet, okay. but uh, yeah, man, he was uh, he was good. He had a um, and again, I know people want to hear the younger guys. Like, oh, don't tell me about Darion and Kentron. You but, say that, I but think I'm telling they you, just I, want somebody yeah, to step up. So, they don't care their age. So the last week, uh, 21, who's Darion Williamson? You guys should know that. Bullet I know he had made a ton of plays here, but he ha he's he's he's, he's he's an old veteran. And then Kentron. Both those guys have had really good stretches here for like a week now. It's not like an anomaly. Like, this is a trend. Um, and as Azarie said, Kentron might have been a little banged up to start camp. He ain't anymore. Uh, he looks completely uh, full speed, full go. He beat Azari a couple times for some really nice catches and one-on-ones. And then Darion had, I don't know, like an 85-yard touchdown against a scholarship. I think it might have been Quindarius. Mm. Sorry, Quindarius, if it wasn't you. But really good throw, great catch. Like those, And they made plays in 7-on-7. Seven seven. They made plays in 11-on-11. In 11 11. Like those guys are starting to step up and make the plays you want them to make because they're veterans. And they will be leaned on. Whether they're a big deal at the end of the year, who knows. They will be leaned on a lot, I feel like, this first month. All right. So Darion was my, like, player of the day for yeah. the offense. Defensively, I don't know. I I thought the offense kind of started off strong in the first half of the day. Second half, when they moved back into the IPF, did some 11 on 11. I thought it was just an uneven day, at least that second half. Uh, some busted coverages, which is not yeah. very normal for the, the defense. Uh, some false starts, procedure penalties by the offense. It was kind of a stalemate inside of there, but some stuff that you, you don't want to see after you're on day 21 of practice here. I'm not going to panic uh, overall in the holdup, but how would you characterize the day, I guess, maybe more broadly, generally? Yeah, I think it was a good back and forth. You could say uneven. Like, I thought the defense and offense both had their moments. Like, uh, I think DJ hit a big throw, and, and uh, maybe it was a busted coverage, but hit a big throw in 7-on-7. Seven seven. And then Cam Riley had an interception on a deflected pass, I think, the next play. Um, so that's good to see, man. That's good to see. I'm, I'm looking in the camera now, Aslan. I'm gonna, I've I made it. a point that I'm going to start looking more into the camera and talking directly to you. Uh, but, yeah, I thought that overall the tight ends had a good day. Um, I thought the offense in general had a pretty good day. It's just, you know, there's going to be some unevenness. And then also it's like it's one of those moments where when the receivers have played as well as they have, in my opinion, collectively for the past week, do you then start worrying about your DBs? Or that's that's the that's yeah. the rub of, of covering preseason practice. Now all of a sudden, okay, maybe the secondary isn't quite as locked down as we thought because the receivers are making these plays. But I really honestly think it's the receivers raising their game. Again, it's not an elite group probably, but it's, a, it's, it's turning into a group that you think, okay, maybe by the middle of the season this could be a really nice unit. Yeah, I think you're correct. There's, there was two plays that kind of stood correct, out there. I know I'm correct, Aslan. I don't need your confirmation. Hey, wake up, Orchant, every day. You get this kind of banner, this dynamic, every day. Wake up, Orchant podcast. But for like podcast. 15 minutes, though. But you're right. The first play that I'm referring to, like in that 7-on-7, seven 11-on-11 seven, 11 11 period, I think that was just Mike Norvell being Mike Norvell and scheming it up well. Yeah, the right. second time around, it was another tight end, but that one, it felt like yes, guys weren't handing Somebody things off lost, properly. Yeah. So um, I do think that I still have seen a lot of contested catches in terms of like the 11-on-11 11, 11 on 7-on-7. Seven seven. There was some of that one-on-one -on -one stuff going on. But yeah. like to your point about – I think that I honestly, man, maybe it sounds crazy. I think the defensive backs are just a little bit exhausted from having won all these games. I almost think they've taken their gas. All these the, the, practices. The, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. they've taken their foot off the pedal a little bit. I think they'll be fine come game time. But that that seems to be the the kind of the energy level to me, though, because I thought it was a lot of like, you know, we're not on our p's and q's kind of thing, as opposed to this, the receivers doing like some really magnificent plays. Yeah, but they, I mean, they are making some plays. Making Elijah plays. Moore, uh, McCoy are making plays in eleven on eleven and seven on seven, working with guys that'll be playing. Uh, so that bodes well for their um, chance to get on the field early uh, this year. And somebody I do want to shout out because he's kind of stood out, um, I don't know, man, for the last week, week and a half. He's wearing a black jersey, and he's a freshman. He's probably not going to play a lot. But B.J. Gibson, man, is making a ton of plays. He's making a ton of plays. He had two long catches against good defenses, good defenders um, in, in the scout team work. Yes. Um, he's playing so well in scout team that I wonder how long he's going to be on scout team. But even if he stays there the full season, what a look. 
That's yeah. a real player, man. That quarterback, Trevor Jackson, that's a real look, man, because that's an athlete. And you think Haynes King can move, this kid can move. Mm-hmm. He might not be as dynamic as Haynes King in a game yet because he's a true freshman. But I like that look that the defense is getting from those guys because it ain't just Trevor Jackson takes the ball and he's immediately swarmed mm-hmm. play over. This scout team has really given the defense a good look, I think. Trev gave it to him a couple times. He did. He gave first-team yeah. defense a couple times, and B.J. Gibson was the recipient of it. Adam Fuller also said as much about B.J. Gibson kind of standing yeah. out to him. We unsolicited, yeah. just brought him up, yeah. yeah. And you've talked about the depth uh, overall on the team, the scout team giving them better looks, and Adam Fuller was talking about his defense. Uh, he's got kind of a number in mind, maybe a little bit lower on the, the range that you had in mind for at least game one. So he said he said last year they played about 21 guys that rotated in. He said this year, uh, I asked him 20 to 25. He said right now – probably looking at 20 guys that they feel comfortable uh, playing with the first team unit. That might grow. That number could probably grow by the end of the season. But right now, going into this game, he sees somewhere in the neighborhood of 20, hoping, you know, injuries notwithstanding, which seems about right. Like they have, I think they had 13 or 14 starters or oars, or oars yeah. on their depth chart. So you got five or six guys after that. And a lot of that is the, I think the secondary, they might play six or seven. But the defensive line, they might play 10. You know what I mean? The linebackers, it's a numbers game there, so they're probably going to play three or four there. But overall, that that adds up, quick math, to about 20 or so. Give Jake Weinberg a shout-out, Corey. Holy moly. So it was the most impressive thing I've maybe seen in all of preseason camp. And you're going to think, oh, no. The most impressive thing this guy has seen in 20 practices is the backup kicker. Number one, he's a five, whatever he was. He's yeah, the highest rated kicker in the country. But he's, but he's behind uh, Ryan Fitzgerald, who's one of the better kickers in the country. But one, on a kickoff today, I watch it with my own eyes. You're not going to believe it. Kicking from the 35 going towards the IPF, he kicked it through the end zone, through the goal post, and it hit halfway up the IPF on a kickoff. In my, in the IPF, for you guys that don't know, is 85 yards away from the 35-yard line. So we kicked it at least 85 yards in the air, and it hit halfway up the IPF. So I'm thinking about a 100-yard kick. It's a nice wind. I'm not going to say that was all him, okay. but holy crap. Yeah. It was incredible. It looked like a, a CGI. <laughs> all right, good. Depth everywhere. Kicker there there is well. that. And the punter, too, uh, Chiment- Chimento. Chimento had about a 65-yard punt today Look. in that same direction. Mass Romano had a 70-yarder. So the wind helped, but still it's crazy to see a kid kick off and it hits the IPF 85 yards away. And again, for those of you maybe wondering about Alex Atkins and his status, yes, he is suspended for the first three games of the regular season, but he is able to participate in practice. He will be in Dublin. He will not be on the field, however, during the game. It seemed like business as usual when I was watching the offensive line going through things. Gabe Fertitta is still the first lieutenant, so they're working through that stuff. Full interviews with Atkins. Adam Fuller as well as John Papuchas, Malik Benson, and Azaria as well, all over on uh, the YouTube channel, WarChant TV. Anything else of note other than telling them to listen to Wake Up WarChant and the Jeff Cameron Show? No, we'll see you in Ireland. And, again, I'm looking at you. I, I, Did I, I feel job. comfortable looking at this camera. It's starting to become part of me. I think you might have taken the Vime Energy Focus Plus. Mm. Maybe. Amen, brother. Go to VimeEnergy.com. Use the promo code WarChantBogo. Buy one, get one free. Thanks to Ben back there doing his magic. That's Corey Maslow. Thanks for watching this edition of the WarChant Wrap presented by Vitamin Energy.